If you're excited about Jesus Christ, let me hear you say, hey, praise God, amen. We're a Christ-centered organization, and we want to see lives change. And we know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is where life change happens. Reaching the heart to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want to see you raise your kids in the church house and not the dope house. Amen. To make this happen, um, excited because there's it's not just this freeway that's going on tonight. We got Marshfield, we got Omaha, uh, Ash Grove. I mean, come on. God's using knuckleheads. And it just blesses my heart because he's using me too. So it's awesome. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing, the people he's reaching. And uh, it's exciting. And uh, like that song says, there is no one like God. There's no one like him. Nothing like God. That's so exciting. And tonight, really, my message is, it could be titled that. There's no one like God. I mean, it's amazing. We're going to learn about a lady in the, in the Old Testament in Joshua chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Joshua chapter 2. There's going to be a lot of reading tonight. Uh, I was a little nervous about that. I'm not the greatest reader, but I really don't. I'm not trying to please you guys. What I'm trying to do is to glorify God, to, to make Jesus' name famous so that we can fully serve him. Because guess who he's using? He's using people. Amazing that he would want to use us. I love it. It gets me all excited. So tonight we're going to learn about Rahab, and I think some of you have heard this story. It's a pretty famous story. It's a pretty well-known story, um, and an exciting story for you and me to look at her life and to see how God used her. Uh, Joshua chapter 2 is where we're going to be reading. Uh, so, so basically kind of set the stage, you know, Moses is, is passed on, and, and Joshua took his place, and so they're getting ready to... He's going to send some spies out here in chapter 2. Chapter 1 is exciting. I love chapter 1. My favorite verse is verse 8 where he says to meditate in the word day and night. That's a great example of our lives as Christians. If you're a Christian today, your main theme every morning when you get up is to meditate in the word day and night. See, a lot of times we, we pass over that. We get over that theme. And chapter 1, that's the theme. I mean, he's like, you're going to use me. And I'm saying from God's point of view that he wants us to meditate in the word day and night. I love that. But then we go to chapter 2. Um, we're going to learn about Rahab. He sends these spies out. So let's just start there in chapter 1, or verse 1, sorry. It says this. Uh, he sends these two spies out and he says, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of the harlot named Rahab and lodged there. Verse 2. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, men have come here tonight from the children of Israel to search out the country. So the king of Jericho sent uh, the king of Jericho sent to Rahab saying, "Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the country." Then the woman told the two men and hid them. So she said said to the men, "Come to me, but I did not, but I did not know where they were from." And it happened as the gate was being shut, when it was dark, that the men went out where the men went, I do not know. Pursue them quickly. That's coming from Rahab's point of view. For you may overtake them. Verse 6. But, but she had brought them up to the roof and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order on the roof. Verse 7. Then the men pursued them by the road to the Jordan. To the ford, and as soon as those who pursued them had gone out, they shut the gate. Verse 8. Now, before they lay down, she came up to them on the rooftop and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you had fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the lands are, of the land are faint-hearted because of you verse 10 for he for we sorry for we have heard how the lord dried up the water of the red sea for you when you came out of egypt and what you did to the two kings of amorites who were on the other side of the jordan and she sahon and og who you utterly destroyed verse 11 and as soon as we heard these things our hearts melted Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God 
in heaven above and on earth beneath. Let's pray. God, we love you, Lord. We, we thank you, Lord, for another night. We thank you. Uh, just me and Luke right now, we could just thank you for being used, God. This isn't an easy thing to get up here and preach your gospel. We are not worthy, and we know that. Lord, I'm not worthy to preach your gospel. I'm a sinner, an unrighteous man, but you are righteous, and we're here to glorify you, God, and you will lift us up. And so, God, right now, I just pray that, Lord, you'll pierce the heart, you'll convict the heart, the sinner tonight that's here, that is way away from you because of their sin. Lord, I pray for the Christian tonight that is just living in sin, God, I pray tonight that true repentance, their heart will repent and turn to you, God, by faith, trust in you. God, we love you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we want to glorify you tonight through this word. In Jesus' name, amen. The first thing that we see here, I just want to talk about Rahab for a minute, is her condition. I mean, it, it talks about, in, in verse 1 there, it talks about her condition. She was a prostitute. She was the lowliest of the lowly. You know, she was the worst of the worst in the world's eye, and her sin was before. Everyone knew it. I mean, here we see the king. He says it. You know, she was a prostitute. He even knew who she was. You know, what, what's your condition tonight? What's your condition tonight? I mean, we look down on this prostitute, but what's your condition? What's your spiritual condition tonight? Maybe you got labels on you right now. You came in here with labels, all kinds of labels. If you had badges, it would fill up your jacket. It's the truth. It's the truth. So we're going to learn about how Rahab and what she did and how she turned it over to God. You know, she was dead. She was dead in her sin. Maybe that's you tonight. You have a condition that unless you personally turn it over to Jesus Christ, you can never get rid of it. You know, last week Casey talked about rehabs, and we are grateful for rehabs, and we're grateful for them taking people in, feeding them, sheltering them, and everything. But this is the thing. They don't save people. Jesus saves people. That's what he's in the business of doing. He saves people. And that's what he's doing. That's what he does. That's what the cross means. What are you here for tonight? Why are you here? What are you here for? You know, is, is your condition so big that are, are so small that you just continually got to hold on to it? Or are you ready tonight to get rid of the condition, the sin condition in your life? I mean, we're all born with it. But are you glorifying it in your life? See, at one time she glorified it. See, Rahab glorified it. We know that. She glorified her lifestyle. It was always before. You know, is your lifestyle, my lifestyle, always before me? What do I represent every day as I walk around? You know, it says, for the wages of sin, Romans 6, for the wages of sin is what? It's death. It's destruction. So are you walking around all day long in an empty tomb? Are you walking around and just bitter? Are you walking around and just sour? Are you walking around dead? Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe that's you tonight. Maybe that's you Christian. Because your sin has caused something. It causes something in our life. It causes separation, Christian. If you're living in sin, you're separated from a holy God. Trust me, I've been there. And it hurts. I hate that conviction that comes on you. I'm so grateful for it, but it hurts so bad because I've separated myself with the holy God. See, he is holy. He is holy and worthy of it. But listen, for the wages of sin is death. We could stop there, but he doesn't stop there because he says this, but, the, but it's a free gift of God. It's the free gift of God through eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, it's about Jesus. It's about what he did. Have you surrendered to Jesus today? Are you surrendered to Jesus today? I should rephrase it. If you're not, death. It's death. That's why we're here tonight. That's why we're here tonight. We want you to know that there's hope. See, the story of Rahab is a story of hope. It's a story of grace and mercy what a great story it is. I'm grateful for this woman. And we're going to see some more of that in a minute. Ephesians chapter 2, 2 and 3 says this, In which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the, the princes of powers of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Let's go on to point number two. Rahab and her confession. I love this part. Two through 13 kind of is her confession. It's her confession of uh, what she did here. The, uh, two and three, it talks, they, they come back, or the, the, the king sends them out, 
or that, sorry, let me rephrase that. The spies go out, and the king comes to her. And that's when the king's talking to her. Four and seven, Rahab lies to the king. She lies to him. She hides him. It's never good to lie. This story, that part right there, it's not good. What, what if God would have used and, and created a, an amazing miracle by her telling the truth? I mean, some scholars say that she was just a baby Christian. She didn't know better. I don't buy that. I mean, when you're saved, God puts conviction on you. It wasn't right for her to say that. It wasn't, it's never right to lie. It's never right to lie. But here the situation is is she did lie, okay? But you shouldn't. Verse 8, eight through 13 there, it's, it's um, really the aha moment. of What I would call it is the aha moment. Um, she had heard. I love this part. She had heard about the Red Sea parting. She had heard about what Moses did. She had just heard it. That's amazing to me. She had heard these stories, and she believed. We're going to see proof of that right here. What she claimed is this. Rahab claimed salvation from the coming judgment on the basis of simple faith. She took what she'd heard and what she knew to be true as an, as an invitation to believe in, in the God of the Israelites. She turned from the gods of Jericho to embrace the God of glory by faith. I thought that was amazing. I thought that was amazing. She had heard about it. It was their simple faith. I mean, she didn't have a copy of God's Word. I mean, I was thinking about this today as I was just thinking about my message, and, and I was thinking about how we have a full copy of God's Word, and we don't read it. I was thinking about we have the inspired Word of God, and we don't read it. So how can we trust it if we don't read it? She trusted God. It was simple. It was simple. I got to thinking about this, too. I love this part right here because... She was real simple, but she knew she had, a, she had a, a, a sin that was so big that no one would accept her but Jesus. What about you? What do you got going on? You know, I mean, she was so simple. She came to him because she knew that he was the only one that could heal her. He, she knew that. I love how she comes to him. No matter where you come from, no matter what your background is, no matter what label you have tonight, I'm telling you right now, it's simple faith. It's the simple faith. It's that childlike faith. That's how you come. You don't come all proud and high five and chewing bubble gum to the altar. You come to the altar broken. I mean, was she not broken over since she was? I know it. You know why? Because she has a changed life, and we're going to see that in a minute. But it's the simple Bible-like faith. It's that simple faith that she turned to him. She, she turned in by faith, but then there's a, there's a point of repentance. But my, my cry to you tonight is come as you are. Come as you are, just as you are. You don't have to all this fig, have it all figured out. I don't know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a UPS guy, and so I had a driver helper. I don't know, he was supposed to be here tonight. I don't know if he's here or not, but I had this driver helper. And um, Anyways, man, he just... It was awesome spending time with him. I had him for like four weeks, right? And, man, I was just sharing with him. We, I was investing in him, and, man, I was just waiting for this aha moment. I was waiting for salvation. And I'll be honest with you, the first couple days I had him with me, I was a pushy salesman. I mean, I was all over it like this could be it. And I was like, boom, 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 boom. I was throwing some punches. But then all of a sudden, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to love this guy right where he's at. I'm just going to love him right where he's at. And so I kind of just, hey, man, what? You interested in reading the Bible? Because if you are, man, I'd love to take you to some passages, man, you know. And, hey, do you have a Bible at home? And I'd, he would read a little bit, you know, and he'd come back with some questions. And it became real exciting for me. But I never had that all home moment with him. But this was the thing I learned that he told me was, man, i got to know all this before I can turn to God. i gotta, I got to know all this before I can trust God. i got to know, and I said, stop. Amen. you got to know all what? Let me, let me just make it simple for you. You've got to know that God sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I, I said, it's a simple gospel. I said, you, you get all these information, and it's like an overload. You're distracted by information. I said, it's simple. God, God, the God of this universe, wants to have a relationship with you through his son, Jesus Christ. The question is, is do you... All of you, do you believe that? I, I took him to this, and I'm using him for an illustration, and I'm kind of glad he's not here, but I wish he was here. You know one of them deals? 
But, but this is the thing I, I told him. I said, hey, listen, let me just take you to Genesis for a minute. Genesis chapter 1, it says, in the beginning, God. Well, I believe that. I don't have a problem with that. But my question to you is, do you? Maybe you're here tonight and you have a problem with that. I don't know. I don't know where you're at. But what I'm asking you is, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe it's infallible? Do you believe it's truth? Because I do. You know why? Because it's changed my life. And I've seen it change many lives. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit abiding in us, us feeding the Spirit of God through the Word of God in our life. See, I mean, we can play games all we want. You, maybe, maybe you're here and you're, maybe you're just going to go out the, the same way you came in here, but this is the thing. I'm telling you tonight that the, the Word of God has the power to change your life through the Holy Spirit, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, through the blood that was shed for your sin and my sin, but you've got to get real with God tonight. You've got to repent of your sins and trust Him by faith to do what He says He's going to do in the Word of God because He's willing to do it. But are you willing to do your part? Are you willing to repent tonight, to turn to Him by faith? See, this whole passage is about faith. It's about her faith. She just heard it. I mean, what's he got to do to tug on your heartstrings? What's he got to do to, to, to show you that you're a sinner? I mean, I'm up here. I, I, I'm not really a good preacher. I'm not really a good communicator. But he's using me. You know what I mean? I'm cool with that. I like it. I'm excited about it. It's, it's part of my study time. It's a part of me getting real with God. It's a part of me getting real with myself and realizing how unrighteous I am. I love, it. I love how he uses people. I love how he uses Rahab in this, in this story. You know, the Old Testament shows us how holy God is. He's holy. It's hard to wrap our mind around that. But he's a holy God. There's no blemish in him. We're blemished people because of sin. But he's holy. The Old Testament shows us how he deals with sin. He put the hammer down on him. I mean, think about Sodom and Gomorrah. All these places sin, what do he do? Done. <coughs> Done. Destroyed them because of their sin. What's he going to do with your sin and my sin? When we stand before a holy God, what's he going to do with your sin and my sin? He's a holy God. He has to deal rightly with sin. It has to be dealt with. Hey, guess what, though? This is awesome. Today, grace is sufficient. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you get real with your condition. See, Rahab had to get real with her condition. She confesses it to him. She's like, your God, he's the God. Well, I'm up here telling you, my God, he's the God. He's the God. He's God. He can, fi he, he can fix you. I can't fix you. I promise you. I will mess it up. But God can fix you. It's through his son, Jesus Christ. It's through what he did on the cross. He has the power to do it. And I believe it. Yes. Do you believe it? That's the question. Jesus lived a sinless life. Jesus is our example. He lived a sinless life. He lived a holy life on earth. There has only been one righteous, and he's the one. You know, I loved what he said. You know, we, we, we think we're righteous. We think we're good. There's none righteous. No, not one. There's not one of you that's right. I'm not righteous. I'm, run, I'm unrighteous. The only righteous one that came, he came holy, righteous, and then we killed him because of it. We put him to death. We put him on the cross. Our sin causes, caused him to do what he did on the cross, caused him to die. That's what it did. Look at verse uh, number 10. Look at verse number 10. It says this, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the kings of Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan. I mean, think about that for a minute. Have you got over that, Christian? <laughs> think about the power of God right there. He dried up the sea. I mean, they weren't sloshing around. They dried across dry. They walked right across dry land. That's amazing. That's a miracle. This is the God I serve, right here. She didn't get over it because she knew she was unrighteous. I mean, how many? I, I know I'm beating this over your head, but it's because we're unrighteous. We have a holy God that loves us. 
He loved us so much that he sent his son. Please don't miss that tonight. That's our God. That's my God. The God that can dry up the Red Sea. Here we see Joshua's life. Joshua sends these spies out. They swim across the water. They go see Rahab. They stay with her. Sends them, he sends them out. They come back. But, but when he gets there, it's amazing how all this, is, all this is, is a prophecy that's being fulfilled. All this is being fulfilled. And, and it's amazing what happens. It's amazing what happens. Listen to what she says there in verse 11. Listen to this. There's no other help for me than God. I mean, that's what I see right there. But this is what she says. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. I love that. What, what kind of testimony are you preaching every day? What kind of testimony are you preaching every day, Christian? What about non-Christian? Non-Christian, I mean, you've been going, maybe you've got these waves of life, man, you're in and out, you're in and out. Maybe you even come to church every once in a while or whatever, but this is it tonight, man. The rubber meets the road right here. Poof. God is going to judge you. He's going to judge us. He's going to judge us. But you can bow willingly now to Jesus Christ instead of later. You can bow now. It's amazing. She is pointing at God. She's pointing at their God, but it's her God now. That's amazing. Tonight I'm asking you this, unsaved person. You ready to surrender tonight? What's stopping you? I mean, all this junk that we accumulate, all these distractions that we accumulate, these relationships, these unhealthy whatevers, what is it that's got you tonight? What's your badge? What's your label tonight? And are you willing to sacrifice it at the altar? Maybe you're not. I don't know where you're at tonight, but I'm telling you there's hope. But it's not in your God, small g. It's in the big God, big G. The God of this universe. Hallelujah. God. Listen to what Warren Wiersbe says. This is awesome. This is a cool one. True saving faith involves the whole personality. The mind is instruction. The emotions, the emotions are stirred, and the will then acts in obedience to God. The lost person sees the need and claims the invitation of the Spirit of God to come to Jesus by faith. Man, that's good. Stirring you up right now. There's some of you stirred up, guaranteed. Why? Because the word's being preached. It's not my words. I'm not going to apologize for them. It's his words. This is his word. This is his copy. What I'm saying, you're stirred up. What are you going to do? Are you going to move? Hey, Christian, are you too prideful tonight? Maybe you're too prideful. You're holding on to that sin. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're saying, I'm not letting go of that. I don't want anybody to know that. Well, guess what, tough guy? You're going to get judged. Guess, guess what, tough lady? You're going to get judged. Yes. Hey, why not have the freedom and peace that you can have, the reassurance that you can have? You don't have to be miserable. You don't. You can have peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding. I love that. That's from Philippians chapter 4. Great verse. Get that peace tonight, whoever you are, wherever you're at, whatever you're hung up on, your sin. Tonight, get true peace, the satisfaction of Jesus Christ. And what he did. Has there been a true change in your life and in your behavior? See, because there was a real change in her after, after salvation, after she confessed him. Listen to this, verse 13. And spare my family. Look what her number one concern is after she admits, God, you're the God. You're my God. Now look, she, she cares about her family. She cares about her friends here. I think that's awesome. I think that's amazing. What's your concern, Christian? Is it building yourself up, making your own kingdoms? Guess what? I'm guilty. Done it. Been there. What, what is your concern? Is it lost people? Because that should be our number one concern. I had to check myself on this. I did not like this part. I'm just being real because guess what? I try to build these kingdoms all the time. I try to put stuff in front of God. And guess what I do? I lose track of people. I lose track of the lost people. Because guess what you're going to do? You're going to put stuff in front of God, and then what happens is, is you're going to be over here daydreaming, lollygagging. You've seen those people. You've seen them in Walmart, I guarantee you. They're over there just space cadetted out, and they don't know what's going on. That's what we're like. We're just like space cadets. We're like, oh, here we go. I mean, it's the truth. Get right with God so you can fully serve Him, so you can be on task, so we can be 
driven by what his Holy Spirit calls us to do. When we pray, he's listening. When we pray for that lost person, he's listening. His will is for them to be saved. His will is for your family members to be saved that aren't saved. His will is for your friends to be saved that aren't saved. His will is for this place to be filled up with non-Christians so they can be saved, so they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and be saved. How awesome is that? That's what my God does. Saves people. He's in the business doing that. Isn't that awesome? I think it is. Man. I love it. I love it. She wants her family to be spared. (laughs) Man. I pray that you guys get so excited about salvation that you guys beat the streets and fill this place up with lost people. (laughs) How awesome would that be? You guys get fired up. I mean, you can draw a circle around yourself, start reading for yourself, let the Spirit move on you, you'll be at your own church somewhere. Come on, let Him fill you up to the point of moving, to the point of trusting God's sovereign plan on your life. See, God had a sovereign plan for her. I mean, here in a minute, we're going to see this. It's amazing. It's the blood of Jesus that sets the sinner free from the sentence imposed by the wrath of God. Listen to what Romans 5, 9 says. Since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall be, much more shall we be saved from his wrath. <laughs> you, we're saved for eternity, but the biggest reason why I'm saved is I'm saved from God's wrath. Let me say that again. You're saved from God's wrath. I mean, come on. That don't shake your toes and your boots up. Come on now. We're saved from the wrath of God, a holy God that has to deal with sin. We're saved from his wrath. I could say that 55 times and it'll get more exciting each time, but I'm telling you, we're saved from the wrath of God. If you're saved, if you're saved, you're saved from the wrath of God. You're saved from the wrath of God. Love that. Love that, man. Love it from the wrath of God. All right. I want to um, I want to read a verse here out of uh, let's see here I want to read a verse out of here, James here this is what it says but someone may well say you have faith and I I have works show me your faith without the works and I will show you my faith by works you believe that God is one you do well the demons also believe and shudder but are you willing to re- to recognize you foolish fellow, that faith without works is, is useless. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar? You see that faith was working with his, with his works, and as a result of works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that man is justified by works and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. What an awesome passage to recognize her life here, but to recognize what Jesus how faithful Jesus is to us. But listen, he's calling you to do something more. I mean, some of you are just sitting, you're soaking, and you're souring. It's the truth. He's called us for so much more. He called her for so much more. So much more. I want to get in the last point so bad, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that for, for now. <laughs> We're going to go into this. Look at verse 15 through 21 there. I just wanted to kind of mention the scarlet, the, the, the rope. See, those spies came in there and they said, you know, hang this down and we're going to save your house. We'll, we'll do what we said we would promise. They promised her that they would save her family. That's what she wanted. And that was a promise that they made to her. But she had to lower this scarlet, this red um, rope that, 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 that she let them down with. And if that would have been me, I mean, I would have I put 50 red ropes out there. I mean, because what's about to happen is a big deal. I mean, I don't think you see how big of a deal this is. Maybe you've heard this story over and over or even sang songs about it. 
But this is a huge miracle in the Bible. But this thread, this, this cord, this, this red uh, string that was, that was lowered down, it represents two things that I saw. First of all, it was a reminder. It's a reminder uh, to us. I don't know if you remember back in Exodus, like chapter 12-ish, I think it was chapter 12, where they were, that God was going to send the death angel. Well, they had to put this blood over their door, the threshold of their door, so that it would pass by. That's one, one thing that it represents there. The other thing, too, is the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood on the cross. It represents his saving grace. See, she's about to get saved. I don't know. I mean, let's just go to the end real quick of this. And, and I mean, this is a monster story. I love this part right here. But see, the end of this, if you look at verse 24, let's just look at verse 24 real quick. Look at this. And they said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered all the land into, your, into our hands. For indeed, all the inhabitants of the country are faint-hearted because of us. See, they knew that God's promise was going to come true. I mean, Jericho, you could shut all the walls you want, but when God's in charge, it's going to make it happen because he's in charge. So turn to verse, or chapter 6 real quick. I want to look at two verses real quick, one and two. Let's read six, one and two, it's just a couple pages over. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Verse two, and the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. Now look at verse 16 and 17. And the seventh time it happened when the priest blew the trumpet that Joshua said to the people, shout. For the Lord has given you the city. Verse 17, now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction. It and all who are in it. Also Rahab, or sorry, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who dwell, sorry, and all who are with her in her house. Because she hid the messengers that went, that, that stayed with her. So check this out, man. How cool is that? The only ones that were spared were her. God made a promise. And see, Jericho was a filthy city. I mean, it represents sin. It was filthy. I mean, their gods, they had so many gods in there, but their main god was the god of lust. I mean, they had sexual orgies like they were, I mean, all, all the time. It was just a terrible, terrible place. And see, God shows us a picture of what he's going to do with sin. And in sin in our life, he's going to judge it. And he judges them, and he destroys the sin. He destroys the whole city. But... I love that word. When you see the word but in Scripture, especially in the New Testament, I love that word. But Jesus. But Jesus. But Jesus healed the leper. But Jesus healed the woman. But Jesus. I love that part. But listen to this. He spared Rahab. He spared her. Imagine the, the, the walls of Jericho. They were, this place was a fortified city. It was a big city. Big walls. Right? Just imagine that for a second. Let's just say that they're as high as this building. They circle this thing. God gives him, he tells him what to do. He sends his commander um, in, in, in verse 13 of 5. He sends his commander, uh, talks to, to Joshua, and then all of a sudden he, he gives him the command, circle the city, send the Ark of the Covenant. Pretty soon they're circling it. Well, then we see the story. The walls come tumbling down, but where Rahab was living. I mean, it's, just, it's amazing. Hallelujah. I mean, think about it. Her, her, her place of residence was on the wall. The whole wall came tumbling down but this section. I was like, man, that's amazing. Only God can do that. I mean, isn't that awesome? I mean, don't get over that. You know, I mean, we sing these songs and we go through the motions of all this stuff, but as I read that, I was like, I don't want to get over that miracle. What about in your life, Christian? Has God, are, are, if you're saved, have you got over your salvation? Don't get over it. And if you have, get, get on the altar. Get right with him. Repent of your sins so you can have joy. You know, Proverbs 17, 22, I quote this in my prayer earlier. Proverbs 17, 22 says, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. There's too many Christians that have dry bones, man. Be fully used by him. Fully used by God. I want to be fully used by God. I was thinking about this miracle that he did. And I was just like, man, this is so amazing. But the biggest thing that I thought about all week as I was reading this passage was his grace and his mercy on her. I mean, here we have a harlot, the worst of the worst. Grace and mercy he showed her. He showed her grace and mercy. It 
one of the um, one of the awesome things about salvation is is you have a new family. I mean, here we see a harlot that, I mean, destruction. God uh, God destroys the city of Jericho. She's saved. Now, now I just want to show you her lineage now for a second. Okay, this is. Rahab the harlot. She's mentioned eight times in the Bible, and six of them she has the word harlot with it, or prostitute with it, okay? But now listen to this. Matthew 1 5, this is what it says. This is her new family. Let me show you this. Solomon begot Boaz by Rahab. <laughs> so here she gets, I mean, God saves her, right? She uh, is unclean because she's a Gentile, and the Jewish people, you know, they had to do this ritual thing or whatever, but she's saved by God into the family of God. That's salvation. We're Gentiles, but we're saved into the family of God through Jesus Christ. How awesome is that? Now, she's saved. Now, now God gives her a, a husband that's a, the Jewish man, and here we have his name, and she, she had a son to Boaz. Now, listen to this. Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David the king. Well, if you know the Bible at all, that's the lineage of Jesus Christ. Rahab the harlot is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. How awesome is God? That's the lineage of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. Listen to what Hebrews says. This is so cool because Hebrews chapter 11 is the faith hall of fame. Right? I mean, you have to have faith to be in the hall of fame of faith. I mean, it's just the way it is. Pretty simple, right? Hebrews chapter 11, listen to this. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were dis, uh, disobedient because she had given a friend a friendly welcome to the spies. She kept God's people. Now listen to this. And what more shall I say? For, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets. Who's she mentioned with? She's mentioned with all these prophets. She's mentioned with Moses. She's mentioned with these heroes of faith, Abraham. She's mentioned with these guys of faith. Why? Because of her faith. What's your faith in today? What is your faith in today? Is your faith in, in hope in your circumstances? Is your faith in your hope and your label? What's your label tonight? You know, what are you labeling yourself as tonight? Are you a child of the Most High God? Jesus. He died for you. He rose again the third day. He's sitting next to God, and he's waiting for you to cry out to him. You know, he said to knock. He's waiting for you to come to the door. I wanted to get a couple, like a bunch of pieces of paper. I didn't do it, but this is my challenge for you this week. Her biggest concern after salvation was to reach her family. Bring my family in. God saved her family. God wants to save your family, your friends. Bring them. Be an example to them this week of what Jesus did in your life. If you're saved, act like a saved person. Get in your word this week. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to guide and direct you to give you courage. Feed your spirit, not your flesh this week, Christian. If you're not a Christian, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day you can surrender to Jesus Christ and put him first. See, we see the grace and mercy all over her. You see her sin. It labels her as a prostitute. Your sin's just as bad as hers. My sin's just as bad. My condition is just as bad as hers. Has your life ever been rehabbed like Rahab's? I thought that was good. I thought that was good. If so, thank him and live for him. If not, come to him now and call on him for salvation. If you were to die right now and stand before the Lord and he looked down at you and you looked up at him and he said why should I let you into heaven into my heaven what if he said that to you right now what would you say could you say father I should be allowed into heaven because as a sinner I place my faith in Jesus Christ and in his shed blood and his resurrection from the dead I have nothing else to claim but faith in Christ. Could you say that tonight? Or are your labels always before you? Are your labels always before you? Choose today who you're going to serve.
what he says. Choose today. Choose right now. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to serve Jesus Christ, Christian? Huh? Or you got too much baggage? Well, guess what? That's the awesome thing about the, about the uh, altar. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of sacrifice. Sacrifice tonight. Man, what label can hold you back from reaching people? What's holding you back from reaching people? Be fully used by Jesus Christ, Christian. Get right tonight so that you can be filled this week, so that you can be used this week, so that you can reach people this week. I don't know what your burden is. I don't know what your burden is tonight, but you got them. I know you do. We all do. We're all in this together. Save person tonight. Sacrifice it, whatever it is. Lift it up to God. Trust him by faith that he can do it. Lost person tonight, it's time for you to surrender to Jesus Christ. Don't wait. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till it's too late. I'm going to pray for us as the worship team comes. God, we we just come before you a holy God tonight, Lord. And I just, I pray right now for the people that are here, God, that they will repent and turn to you by faith. God, it's not about my words, but it's about your words. It's about what your word says. You keep your promises, God. Your prophecies are fulfilled. I was just thinking of Isaiah chapter 9, how you predicted, how you predicted Jesus coming 700 years before he came in Matthew God, I was just thinking how awesome that is that you always keep your promises. I was thinking about Romans chapter 8, 38, that there's no heights, nor depths, nor principalities, there's nothing that can separate me from the love of God. I'm grateful for that, Lord. There's people in here right now that are lost, dying, and going to a devil's hell, Lord. And right now they're living for themselves. They're serving their self, their selfishness. They're always looking in the mirror. They're always looking in the mirror saying, me, 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 mine, mine, mine. God, I pray tonight you'll break them of that. God, I pray tonight you'll just crush their spirit. You'll crush them, God. Let them know how much you love them through your son, Jesus Christ. And God, I pray this right now, Lord, that you'll just, I pray for true repentance in here tonight. True repentance, God, that people will come humbled to you. They'll come like the harlot Rahab with nothing to give you but their self. Nothing. She had nothing left but herself. So God, use us tonight. Use the Christians in here, God. I pray they'll get right with you tonight. We love you, Lord. We praise you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Come as you are. Altars are open. <laughs>